I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk, and I am with Michael Lee with GI Partners and Anthony Bolner with Stream Data Centers, and we are sitting here live in Montreal. Hey, I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk. Focus on cloud, location, data center industry trends, and dynamic market. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for hosting us. We're really excited to be here. Thank you, William. You bet. Um, so before we begin, you know, one of the things that I always love to do is um, give the opportunity for the people that we're discussing the market with an opportunity to share their background. You know, what led them to uh, the role that they were in today. So, Michael, let's start with you um, in your asset management role now with GI Partners. How did you get there? It took 20 years to get here, <laughs> so it's kind of a long road. And came out and really did hotels first, which is kind of different. Uh, worked overseas probably about half of my career and then half of my career in the US. Okay. So started off in the US and then went to South Korea, met my wife, had two kids there. Um, came back to the States and worked for a company called Heinz, who you may or may sure. not have heard of, private real estate group. Yeah. Ran with them for about six years. Um, and then after that, went to uh, Japan and uh, worked for a hedge fund and came back and did CMBS because that's when the market was okay, exploding sure. yeah. about 2008. Went to digital realty in about 2013, uh, great experience. And then recently went about two years ago to GI Partners. Sure. Obviously the people that started digital, so sure. it sort of came full circle. Yeah. Um, my role at GI is kind of unique and different. Um, not only do I run some of the assets for GI Partners along with this asset here, but I also do uh, started a company called GIPM, which is our GI property management group. We want to be vertically integrated, and we thought no one could manage these assets better than us. Yeah, you bet. Uh, this is a unique asset, obviously, for us. It's different than what we have, like at One Wilshire and Como, uh, which are more stabilized. This is a value add opportunity. I'm excited to talk about this asset later on. You bet. And Anthony, what's your background in the space? You've been in the data center industry a, a while, a and I mean years. that in a good way. Yeah. Uh, talk about that. So uh, I started the CBRE right out of college and uh, was really a commercial real estate guy. Got focused on technical real estate um, in Dallas and kind of became the technical real yeah. estate guy in the in the CBRE office back in really that was probably the early nineties yeah. and um, worked uh, worked at CB through oh seven. Got to know the Stream guys through working on some projects together. Mm -hmm. uh, joined what was then Stream Realty in 2007. We we really uh, rebranded it as Stream Data Centers in about 08, and uh, have been with Stream Data Centers for the last 13 years. You bet. So Anthony, one of the things you mentioned was just starting uh, with CBRE in Dallas, and I think one of the things that is interesting to me in the data center space is that we have certainly seen how this uh, market has gone from like being able to understand what's happening in a city to really a region to you know a country to now this global uh, business that we're in and it, that certainly has changed in the last five to ten years I mean it did not used to be like that but it certainly now is so is true. evident and, and one of the things that I think is really interesting about this facility here and, and Michael y'all's investment uh, in in this market um, is it really is it, it speaks to that global business footprint uh, that companies have today. But talk about this asset and why it was attractive from an investment perspective right. and just how it sits in the Montreal market. Well, I think you've done a tour and unfortunately people who are watching just haven't seen the sure. asset, but it's an incredibly impressive asset and it creates a lot of flexibility in this market. Um, we have approximately about eight megs that's ready to be occupied. We call it plug and play space. Sure. Ready today. Yeah, we're sitting, um, I mean, we're sitting in some of it right here. There's no other asset in Montreal that has the availability, the readiness to go to market as quickly as we sure. are. Uh, we also have obviously the shell space as well too. So they have the ability to actually grow into the space as well too. Once again, with the cost of power being as low as it is, I don't want to say this on camera because yeah. we've got a special rate, um, <laughs> but it is very relatively cheap, cheaper than anywhere sure. else that I know of in the U.S. Along with that and the idea that we've seen the market now have a monumental tick up, whether it be redundant and resilient sites for the Toronto market. And we've all seen yeah. Toronto picking up yeah, and leasing. Great. So now they need to create a redundant resilient site somewhere else in Canada. And we felt strongly that Montreal was the next target market. 
I think we're sort of warranted in that thought process. We've seen two or three strong RFPs from major cloud providers coming into the market right now. We're selective, we want to make sure we find the right, right group. But we felt that we found a really great asset yeah. that can warrant a great return on investment. Yeah, and it, and it sure it shows extremely well from a tour perspective. Anthony, talk about the asset and then also how it sits within the greater Montreal market. Well, I think it's just a very unique asset because I think if you look at the hyperscale hyperscalers out there right now, yep. you know, oftentimes time is important. And sure. the, the fact that we have eight megs fully commissioned, ready to go here, obviously, um, as well as this power, this 90,000 square feet of powered shell yeah. space yep. that uh, just gives you know an, a, a large user of scale um, the ability to really stay and grow. And you know, connectivity is a big part of that. Yep. Um, and, and the diversity and the redundancy of yep. carriers we have here is also a, a huge plus that this facility offers. Yeah, and Michael, you mentioned Toronto and Montreal and how they almost complement each other in certain ways. Talk about how these markets in Canada um, attract different users and, and what are the you know valuable reasons companies come to Montreal over Toronto, et cetera. I see Toronto. Toronto is the largest market yeah. and the largest data center market in Canada, no question. But I do think that some some of the key offerings that Montreal have has a very low cost of power, also very green power. Yeah. And and I do think that we've seen we've certainly seen large deals in Toronto even over the last 12 to 18 months, but I really I feel this this, this new demand yeah. now in Montreal and it's from the largest okay. hyper scale pro, you know providers sure. out there. So it it's cloud, it's also large operators uh, but but significant, um, you know, traction. Interest in this market. In the interest in the market. I don't think it's too dissimilar to what we see in the U.S. Hmm. I mean, you see the L.A. market, which has limited growth just because of the real estate. Yeah. And they had to go somewhere. Yeah. And they don't want to pay 16 and a half cents a KW, so they went to Arizona. Right. And that's what my predecessor company did six to seven years ago. They were first to market. They were very successful. And it took a few years, yeah. but they got there. And I don't know if that's necessarily a redundant resilient site to LA. Sure. But just based off of demographics, that's how, well, in my mind. And, and, and I and I do think it not not that we're just gonna parallel Montreal to Arizona, but I do think in a lot of ways, um, a lot of the same type of growth that we're seeing in the Phoenix market right Absolutely. now, we're seeing this Absolutely. similar in Absolutely. in Montreal. And well, it's you know Cloud and cloud providers are, are, are obviously part of that, but there's there are large operators that are that are are right behind Absolutely. that that demand as as well as some very large enterprise users as well, financial services, healthcare, etc. You saw this market being a single to double, maybe one or two companies really mon monopolizing this market. Yep. But in the recent past, in the past six months, you've seen several M and A's now. So we're just not the only one noticing yeah, this. Right. Um, I like to claim that we were here first to market, <laughs> That's right. and uh, we're ready to go. Yeah. Uh, we also have a beautiful tier three asset as well, too. And I'd sure. Like to throw that out as well. Well, and I, I was going to mention, I think once the maturity in supply starts to hit, not oversupply, but just once you have qualified data center operators that are doing what they're doing here in other markets, um, you know, that creates opportunities for the users themselves. And I think those bigger users are looking to companies like yours to understand what the opportunities are and how they could grow down the road. And let's talk about those companies very quickly, the ones that traditionally have larger demand. What are some of the challenges you see them facing today? Because in my opinion, that, that's really the group that has changed the opportunity, the big opportunity in the market in the last three to five years. When we started Data Center Hawk, I'm not sure I ever thought that their growth would have been what it is, but it is certainly, it yeah, fast, it is right. certainly, we've seen that in North America, we're, we're certainly seeing that take place in Europe and then, then other regions across the world. But how do their challenges, you know, impact the space today? And, and maybe what are some of the ways that this facility meets some of those challenges? So I'll give you, I'll give you three, th three thoughts. Let's go. Timing, yeah. scale, and control. Mm. Okay. 
and by you know timing obviously we talked about the existing capacity that's here and can be deployed quickly yep. scale got the powered shell space which it's it's scale it's also flexibility because it's the ultimate ability for you know a large user to take what they need now and then plan and do what they want to do for the you know the, yep. the longer haul and then control and you know, we all know this and the, the larger guys really do want to control things like operations a lot of time. They want to control the entire site from a security um, perspective. Yeah. And they even like to own the site hmm. or, or, or potentially, you know, anyway, they, they, they like the ability to potentially own either now or down the road. Yeah. So. We're obviously a privately held company, sure. so our requirements and the reason that Anthony says there's flexibility and we can do whatever we want yeah. is because it's true. We, we can do what we want. Uh, we will be patient. We will find the right deal. And once again, it, cloud demand is kind of crazy these days because sometimes the requirement just forms. And yeah. No one really knows. Yeah. That's what makes our business so different. Yep. All of a sudden, there's a 10 meg requirement and it came from a new contract <laughs> where it came from the cloud I mean I don't know where it came from but yeah. all of a sudden there's a requirement and they need it now yeah they need to fill it now we feel pretty good of where we're situated today because we can provide now yeah and we can be ready now yeah um, and it's a beautiful now. yeah and so, there's yeah I was about to say I mean there's not many uh, there's not any other places really like this in this in this general market and that's certainly a, a, a strong position to be in um, Michael, when you think about from an investor's perspective in the in the space, uh, we just did a podcast maybe I don't know, a month or two ago around kind of the framework that an investor has to have in the data center market and how it's it's different than other markets. And so, Nancy, I love your thoughts too. But when you all think about investing in an asset or investing in a market or something like that, what statistics are you using, and what are the things that you're looking at that help you realize? Hey, this makes sense to for us to place our you know capital into, or it doesn't. What are some of the things that you will use to work through that decision process? Yeah, I mean, trend analysis is huge, and, and that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Yeah, and I don't even know sometimes what underwriting expectations are or not. Uh -huh. uh, I will tell you that one of the things GI prides itself on is being a forefront leader of technology. Sure. So started digital realty, yeah. telex, software, Been doing it for a long time. Central. Yeah. So I think we, we sort of understand that if you're first to market, yeah. that gives you a huge competitive edge. And I think we are there here for this particular asset. In general, our investment thesis is always the same. Let's find the best return on investment for sure. whoever is investing with us, whether it be our own money, whether it be investors and so on and so forth. I think we have the in-house expertise not only to look at the underwriting capabilities on the return on investment, but also the technical side as well, too. The reason Anthony's sitting here is there's no pride of authorship here. And what I mean by that is we hire the best in market. Sure. And that's why we have Stream working on this asset in particular. We have another consultant who hopefully you'll meet sometime really soon who's responsible for the connectivity of the asset. Um, part of the story here is, oh, connectivity is not that great. And that was because it was by a single entity. Actually, I would argue that our connectivity is one of the best in Montreal. Um, and this person has all of the, the scales and everything else where he can show you how it is true. And it's just not me telling you. Um, so when we invest in something, we try to be out front in the forefront and yeah. make sure that we make wise decisions. I mean, I'm, I'm sure every investor will tell you that. Uh, we believe in the Montreal market. Yeah. Uh, we believe that there's a story being told not only throughout Canada, but also downwards to the U.S. as well, too. Sure. Um, with Chicago and Ashburn yeah. and connectivity going in and out, we feel very strongly that this could be something that's really going, has the potential to be something really big. Yeah. It's funny, you know, the connectivity story, we've certainly seen that become a much more important part of the discussion in the last, Absolutely. you know, three to five years. Um, you know, not just what fiber providers are in the space, but cloud connectivity, um, the ability for companies to have a mature network. I remember a data center operator telling me that that their customers were literally asking them to like re-architect their network because they needed help uh, in making that happen. Um, you know, when you think about enterprise users today, so did you have something? No, no, okay. No. When you think about, and you had that look, no, the just, light just went off. You were about to bless us with some like great Anthony Bolner wisdom. Um, when you think about enterprise users today, 
how many of them do you think really have, you know, taken all of their assets out of their own facilities and and push them into co-location or cloud? And the reason I ask, because this is a great example of uh, an asset that, um, you know, an enterprise user had and their plans changed, it created an opportunity. Um, and so how do you think that market is today, the enterprise user community? And, and you know, a lot of times we just think everyone is already in the cloud. And, and it's my personal opinion and some of the data that we have Des are I don't believe that's the case. I still believe there's... Uh, a good amount of demand sitting within facilities owned by companies today. I'd love y'all's perspective. It's a, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't know, the previous occupants here, occupant here, I don't know if they're really quote unquote an enterprise user. Okay. I think they happen to have a data center here in Montreal because they were trying to create a redundant site for a data center that they had uh, an additional day, yeah. in a, in a right. different country. But I, I think I understand the genesis of the question. Yeah, but getting to the root of your question, how much call it on-prem enterprise, how much on-prem enterprise demand is still sitting, or how much enterprise demand is still sitting on-prem? Yeah. That's a better way to say yeah. it. And, and, I, and I, think, uh, I think we would all be surprised that there is a lot of on-prem data center demand still mm -hmm. in place. And, and I do think that you know, that will, and I think some of it's there for a reason. Yeah. Because of regulatory issues. Sure. But I, but I think some of it, still has not migrated you know, to the cloud, yeah. let's call it, that's the easy way to say it. Um, so I, I do think that just organic growth and a continued uh, move from on-prem to, to the cloud will, you know, will what is what will continue to, yeah. to uh, you know, push our industry in the right direction over the next, you know, foreseeable Three to five yeah. years. And what do you, when you think of future, uh, what gets you excited to be in the space, in the industry, what gets you excited to have an asset in a place like Montreal and the growth that's here or the opportunities that are here? You know, what are the trends that get you most excited about things three to five years from now? What are the things that you feel like will really drive that demand? I'm going to say something that sounds counterintuitive, okay. but we're more disciplined. <clears throat> I think the cloud market in general in the past, 2016, 2017, 20 megs in Silicon Valley, all with the same cloud provider, 30 megs in Ashburn, just going absolutely bonkers. Mm -hmm. I don't think you saw that this year. Mm -hmm. I, I sure. really, throughout the US, I don't think, you saw pockets where there were large But not like 2018, I totally But agree. I think we're more yeah. disciplined. I think we're more, they're trying to fully utilize what they have in their current space right now. And I think that makes for a healthier market as we move forward in the future. I think uh, they're large enough where they can absorb more, mm -hmm. but I don't think they are because they want to make sure what they're doing is the right process. And what that helps landlords do is you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. If you don't have the product ready, yep. then you lost out. Yep. But if you overbuilt it and you're sitting there, then you just spend a lot of capital on you just sitting there. Yeah. Or worse yet, having to lease that up at a much lower rate than you anticipated on your underwriting because you're running out of cash. Sure. Um, Creating discipline in the market in the next three to five years, I think is going to be extremely beneficial for this market. The amount of different investors that come in, and all of this is sort of counterintuitive. If you see more people come into the market, you're like, uh-oh, more product, lower rates, not so great for the landlord. I really do think that there needs to be more competition in the market. I think that helps separate different types of products within mm -hmm. the market. Because there is not one product that just fits the cloud market. There absolutely is not. Yeah. Um, but everyone has their different strengths and everyone has their different weaknesses. And I think that becomes more apparent as we move in the future. Yeah. I think the standard answer is, is everyone will say 5G, Edge, and you see a little of that happening. People buying stuff in Kansas City, Ohio, I mean, places I didn't sure, never even guess yeah. that people would build into. Um, but the strengths that I see in the market for the next three to five years is I, I think we're we're better understanding of what the data center market is today yeah. than we ever have been yeah. before. Sure. Well, so young, it's such a young market. I mean, and you, you mentioned your predecessor, Digital Realty. I mean, just 2004, I think, is when they went public. So if you think about the, the strategic, um, you know, what this industry does from a strategic perspective for companies and really the world and how young it is, it's really amazing. Uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. We're here in Montreal, Canada, but this is nothing compared to stuff that Digital and Equinix are doing in, in Korea or Japan sure. or now sure. India. I mean... 
we're entering markets that we really never thought that yeah. we would get into for the foreseeable future. Yeah. And honestly, part of the reason they're going into those markets is because the returns are greater. Because the U.S. markets have not turned down because everyone is into this market right now. So that's why I think discipline is huge. Yeah, that's a good point. Moving it into the next three to five years. I think it'll be healthy for us. Yeah. Anthony, what are your thoughts on well, trends moving forward? I, 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 I just think will impact the space? some of it just comes down to the amount of demand. And, and if you just kind of looked at the amount of takedown of capacity over the last five years and then you look at you know the technology that is driving that demand yep. and i mean we're we're just fortunate to live in a time when uh, you know uh, i don't know if demand is is doubling every three years or doubling every five years but it's it just the the level of compute and storage yep. in our world that we live in and it's it's going to land in you know kind of five or six major markets in in north america and fortunately because of the cost of power and the and the green power i mean that montreal has those attributes that will yeah. attract its share of that demand yeah okay so anthony let's talk about this facility that we're sitting in today you know, what are the attributes that are that, that made it an attractive investment opportunity and that are, is attracting user interest today? Right. So the GI Partners Data Center in Montreal, 216,000 square feet, 8 megs of existing capacity, and 90,000 square feet of powered shell space under the same roof, which really gives these large hyperscale users a very unique opportunity to get timing, yep, you sure. can have it right now, scale, you can grow here over time, and control. I mean, this is a large, single tenant yep. asset, completely available. Interesting. So it's just a very yep. unique opportunity. You know, one of the reasons that I was excited to do this was just off the off chance that we could explain actually some of our strategy as well too. I mean, Anthony was talking about this, but it also has connectivity. And once again, the connectivity, I think, is the strongest in Montreal. Once again, I have a biased point of view. Um, the other thing that I think is a positive attribute here is, is the company that owns this asset, and it's GI Partners. We're privately held, we do the right decisions, and we're not, we don't have a lot of people. So we're very responsive to whatever requests or, or needs are, are asked of us. Um, we can provide an answer pretty quickly, and if you need a solution, we can find an answer to that solution pretty quickly. Whether it be through the stream team, whether it be through us, whether it be through our connectivity team, I think we have the experience and the wherewithal, and honestly, the lack of tape, I guess. Minutia. Okay. I'm trying to be kind because we're on tape, but, but I'm really trying to tell you we can move faster yeah. than everyone else, you bet. and we're good, quick to react. You bet. Well, it's a fascinating facility, and I want to thank you all for letting us be here and host this discussion. I think. You know, watching Montreal's growth over the next you know, two to five years is going to be really exciting because, I mean, Michael, you mentioned it, just being kind of the first one or two in this market uh, and seeing what happens uh, in the next few years will be great to watch. So congrats on what you've done so far. I look forward to uh, seeing what happens in the future. Thank you, Dave Liggett. Thank you.